This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Today we take a closer look at the battery pack that Tesla installed on the mule and sort of make some inferences about what this pack allows the truck to do. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Uh, wie geht's in bonjour? Uh, German and French. I wanted to do a brief post as a 2.0 on the release of the video and photos of the uh, Tesla Mule. Today I wanted to specifically focus on the battery pack because Elon Musk indicated there are three or, or more Model 3 engines. So I thought that implied that they would have three or more uh, battery packs that come from the, uh, the Model 3. So a few observation, I'd say let's do four observation. First, uh, size. Second, what the, that size implies about the number of packs used. Three, what the number of packs imply about the cost of that pack. And then four, what the implications are for trucking in general. And then I might even throw a five in and, and, and that sort of addresses the whole meal process. So let me start with number five. One of the problems out there is that everyone including Tesla needs data on the performance of the battery pack to determine you know best practices. So the fact that it exists and it's out being tested I think is good for everyone, Tesla and customers. The second issue that comes to mind is that when you look at this battery pack, the sort of clear pack that's available to be looked at right now, and I think I'll include a photo of this, is Mercedes has a class uh, six or seven truck, and they have no problem showing off the size of their battery pack. Uh, that vehicle is capable of 100 miles, and I'm intrigued because when you look at the overall size of the mule battery pack, it's around the same size, maybe even a little bit smaller than a vehicle that goes 100 miles carrying, let's say, 20 or 30,000 pounds behind it. And so this really highlights uh, how powerful uh, an impact the 2170 battery will have on the whole process of truck manufacturing. The, the third thing that comes to mind is when I first glanced at it, um, you know, the target range was all over the map on how big that thing would be. Uh, let's say worst case scenario, that would be 10 battery packs from Model 3 to power a semi. And when you look at the pack there, um, I would say it's definitely more than one, but nowhere near 10. So if we said about five battery packs from Tesla, at a cost of $8,500 a piece for the Model 3 battery pack, we're looking at probably a, you know, five times, let's say 10 is, is 50K all total. So the battery pack is somewhere in the, in the cost range for Tesla in the 40 to 60,000 range. So at that kind of number, it easily comes into range uh, in terms of price comparison between what current users are experiencing uh, for the purchase of a full-blown uh, long-range truck. Um, the one thing we can't tell from the size of the battery pack and the load being hauled is if this vehicle is being asked to do about 300 miles is what's necessary to be competitive at the Class 8 level. The answer to that we don't know because the the weight of the pack behind it we have to assume is 80,000 80, pounds. We also have to assume that the vehicle has been charged up and is being asked to travel the 300 miles necessary and has the ability to exceed that. Uh, my sense of things is that Tesla wouldn't be testing this 
if they weren't planning on delivering, especially with what's coming out in November. So I have to take them at their word, and I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, it looks capable of easily handling the weight. It looks capable of easily handling the distance. And at the price point it's entering based on its size, I think it's uh, an excellent product that's ready to make a huge difference in the amount of pollution being uh, expelled by these trucks. You know, a sidebar note relative to the battery is I had mentioned that there was an interesting point about the freight uh, choice that was made as the testing situation that they're in. I thought this was interesting because uh, one of the biggest polluters in the United States is the short haul trucks coming out of the uh, transit point, large container ships into warehouses and, and onto railroads into the country. So the fact that uh, they're testing in this circumstance I think is good. I brought this up because one of the big discussions is they'll never be able to go 300 miles or 500 miles so therefore this solution will not work. Um, I would say that uh, from glancing at it I would say that um, at that size if they can go 300 miles um, I think doubling the packs wouldn't add that much weight to allow it to go to five to six hundred miles necessary to be competitive in all realms of tractor trailers. I would say though that um, you know the naysayers that are saying this can't go the distance I, I kind of feel like that's less of an issue and the reason is that there are a number of applications for trucks that are heavy polluters that need to be address before we simply get to something that can go long distances. For example, a battery pack that can handle um, a, a regular route that a garbage truck might run would reduce pollution significantly in many cities because those trucks run all the time. Plus, they burn a huge amount of fuel even though they're on short distances. So if you could use a pack that might go 300 miles in a situation with a garbage truck which is only asked to go 70 miles, but they're consuming a lot of electricity as they move the rear of the truck around so it might consume you know the the 300 mile range but do so in a shorter range because they're using electricity on the back of the truck now this is an interesting application because you're getting a chance to use the truck you can supercharge if necessary if, if for some reason and uh, it's a significant impactor that reduces pollution heavily and your clients are saving, you know, between uh, uh, fuel and reduced uh, maintenance. You know, clients could be saving in excess of fifty thousand dollars a year versus their current solutions. So, I'm excited to see this vehicle out there. I think a discussion of how it's performing is going to be part of the conversation once we get into uh, the Elon Musk sessions. Uh, when the, the truck is introduced in November. Um, another final point that I'm impressed or like to see is the fact that Mercedes is still the at least checkout partner on this vehicle. Uh, the Cascadia front that's being used is great and I would say that um, it's good to have a Mercedes partnership with Tesla here because Tesla's trying to do a lot of things well and their cash and management is spread kind of thin. So it'd be nice to see a partner aboard that can take a little bit of load off in terms of customer interface and cost in doing that while Tesla provides the backup back-end technology that make this whole thing work. Um, very much looking forward to your comments. Um, I think this is exciting video. I'm including a link so you can uh, view the video on the person who actually tracked it down initially. Um, I think that um, from what I can see it absolutely works and the biggest nightmare everyone was trying to figure out was could you get a battery pack that was light enough that it wouldn't consume all of the freight space of that vehicle. In the case of the 81650 there's a reason why Mercedes and everybody else are delivering battery packs 
that only go 100 miles because there's a certain ratio of weight to battery pack that's going on and if you can't get that ratio right it makes no sense to put it on a truck so bottom line a huge 81650 battery on a truck um, configuration for 300 miles plus does not make sense and the reason is that you're carrying so much weight in that pack that you really don't have enough freight that's being able to be hauled on that truck to make it effective. Once we switch to Tesla's new 2170 battery, you're getting a game changer where long distances are now viable for that pack. And the size of the current pack that we're be reviewing today is an illustration of the fact that this actually does work. So look forward to your comments and input. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir, Lehith Road. Look forward to your comments and have a great day.